I mean, how many Hurricane Hunter aircrafts are there? We have two, uh -huh. and the Air Force has about a dozen. Oh, okay. We have two B-3s and about a dozen C-130s. So you're in NOAA, yes. right? And then the Air Force also has them. What's the difference? Uh, C-130 is a high wing, a uh, cargo type air airplane. It's obviously a low wing, and a P is for patrol. A patrol aircraft, the Navy has uh, lots of P-3s. Air Force obviously has lots of C-130s. Gotcha. All right. So that's a drop sound, they call it. Drop sound, yeah, GPS drop sound station. And it measures what now? Uh, pressure, temperature, humidity, wind speed, and wind direction. Wow, okay, and you drop that right into the center of the hurricane, right? Or we'll drop it on the way in, we'll drop it in rain bands, we'll drop them in the eye wall, and we'll drop them in the center of the storm, too. And that's what it looks like there, right? Yep. So that's Hurricane Rita, and the red was the original track that they would have used, and then the green is the actual track, right. and the black, black is the actual track. Green is what the drop sign information. That's right. Now, if they didn't have drop sign, they would have they would have issued things for like Brownsville or something. Or not Brownsville. I mean, uh, get, yeah, Galveston. But instead, it was more like the, the border of Texas and Louisiana. All right, got it, got it. Got it. Craft, our belly radar, our tail radar. And the nose radar. There's four cameras on the aircraft, two out the side, one down below that points down, and one out the nose, and its data is recorded digitally right there behind that seat. Where I'm standing is where our, our scientists sit. Scientists come from the National Hurricane Center or the Hurricane Research Division of NOAA. And they sit here and they monitor the hurricane and the data that's sent via satellite to the hurricane center in Miami that's where they come up with the spaghetti models you see on television that data starts right here in this aircraft as a, as a hurricane spins up to a four or five the yeah. circulation becomes more pronounced and yeah. it, it tends to negate the updrafts and downdrafts in a hurricane sure that makes sense to me stronger its winds are more concentrated right exactly where is that Category one, two, or three—it's not as um, tight. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of updrafts and downdrafts. No, sir. I'm the flight director, the meteorologist on board the aircraft. This is my station right here. Barry Domenio. Damiano. Damiano. Okay, you. Beautiful. The um, intro. How long have you been doing it for? A little over 20 years. Oh wow, interesting. How long these people pass? Here, go ahead, sir. And what does this? What does this do up here, sir? Uh, Mr. Between myself and the navigator across the aisle from me, we direct I don't know. the flight. We tell the pilots where to fly the airplane. Oh, wow, okay. What's the scariest storm you've been in so far? The scariest storm? Yeah, the, in what respect? Like the worst turbulence or something? Uh, probably a storm in 1997 uh, called Erica. Erica, okay. Well, every, every hurricane has its own uh, individual personality, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Some are easy to get through, others are hard to get through. Some have a lull. Get through one way or oh, true, true. Yeah, sure is. Best, best office in the plane, right up here. Thanks a lot. You're Thank welcome. You. So you're the pilot? Yeah, sure. Am. Oh, good. Can I sit in your thing? You can sit in this seat here. Oh, thanks, thanks. You thanks. Bet. Will you will you take my picture with it? Oh. Sure, absolutely. All right. First of all, I have two cameras. One is this one. We yep. can take my picture in it. Okay. So just just briefly explain, because that's to our viewers at home, what exactly this is. This is uh, basically you're looking at the main engine instrument panel right there in the center, and then okay. on the pilot, the co-pilot side is the flight instruments that help us fly from point A and B and navigate and actually fly and take off and land the plane. Sure. Well, the second day on the Hurricane Awareness Tour, we're in Cape May, New Jersey. And tomorrow we're going to go to Baltimore, Maryland, and then Elizabeth City, North Carolina, and then on Friday to Daytona Beach, Florida. Beautiful. Have you ever heard of Seaside Heights? I have not. Seaside Heights is the best. You have to learn, learn where it is on the map. So if there's ever a hurricane, you can call me and remind me. This okay? is my first visit to New Jersey, actually. Now, how did I say I remembered you? Uh, I think you read the discussions religiously on I the read, webpage. That's so. right, I do, I do. nhc.noaa.gov. That's right. That's right. Anyway, thank you very much for appearing. This is a really... So anyway, I work for a place called the Borough of Seaside Heights. We're a city right on the coast. Have you ever heard of that? I have, yes. Really? How? MTV? Well, I don't know if it was MTV, though, <laughs> but I've been having a briefing about this whole area of the uh, New Jersey coastline. Oh, wonderful. Now, you've been, now, you know, I want to tell you that I remember the, the exact moment that you became the director because I was happened to be on the website, and it popped up on the top. Oh, New no. director announced, and I, and I knew you recognized your name because I read the uh, website all the time. Well, because it's sort of my job to keep my people uh, where I live abreast of hurricanes and That's stuff. That's excellent. I'm sure they appreciate for you for doing that. In you fact, know, sometimes they think I spend too much time doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It's important that you do because although it may be infrequent that we see hurricanes up, up here in this part of the world, 
we all know that infrequency is rather disarming. So we want to make sure that you keep people alert to the fact that they're all threatened by hurricanes and tropical storms. And that regardless of whether the season's active or not, they need to be prepared. So I hope that you can convey that to them. Be prepared so that they know what they can do to protect themselves, their families, and their communities. Do you know the last year they said it was like a dud, so to speak, there wasn't that many storms, but we had a storm hit us, or near us, called Ernesto. Yes. And that came on Labor Day, yes. and it caused 80 mile an hour wind gusts from the, the pressure difference, and it ruined our Labor Day weekend. So it's not, it's your, I always tell people it's your experience, not how many storms there were or where they hit. That's exactly right. And a lot of people in South Bay would agree with you back in 1992, where we had a season that was far below normal. We didn't have an A storm until the end of August, yep. and that was Hurricane Andrew. And it almost dis If you had one thing to say to our townspeople, what would that be? Be prepared and listen to you. Oh, thank you very much.